If you want to start making your own embroidery patterns for free, then Ink Stitch is your best option. But let's be honest, this does look a little bit intimidating. But don't worry, today I will show you the best way to get Inkscape set up, how to make embroidery templates that you can use across all your designs, how to import embroidery color palettes that you're going to need to keep your colors consistent. I will also show you a few Ink Stitch specific keybinds and settings, as well as some bonus tips and tricks to make your life in Ink Stitch a lot easier. First thing we're going to want to do is take this window and change it into something we can actually use. First thing you want to do is you're going to come up here to File and you're going to come down to Document Properties and that's going to open this tab on the right over here. Now this next step does depend on the type of embroidery hoop you use but it's very straightforward, don't worry about it. You're going to come over to this box here and you are going to change this to Inch and then you are just going to insert the size of your embroidery hoop. Hit enter and here we have it. Here is our new canvas for our 4x4 embroidery hoop. Uh, there are a couple of other options you can change here too. You can turn the checkerboard off. One of the things that I find especially useful, if you are working with a fabric that isn't white and you would like to see how your design looks, you can come over here to page and you can change your canvas to match the color of your fabric. I find that very useful, but for now, let us keep this to white. Now, it is tedious doing this every single time we set up a new project, so we are going to save this as our embroidery template so we can access this exact layout for every single one of our projects. And to do that, you're just going to come up here to File, Save Templates, and then you're going to give it a name. I'm going to call it 4 by 4 Oop. You can give it a description if you like, and if this is the only reason you are using Inkscape, you can even set this as a default template. Save that, and the next time we come into Inkscape, we can access this template straight away. Let's say, for instance, we have something completely random here that isn't going to fit our 4x4 hoop. We can just come up here to File, New from Template. That will open this window here. We are going to come over to the Custom tab, and we're going to find our 4x4 hoop. We are just going to double click it and it will open as a new document. Now that that's out of the way, we want to set up our color palettes. In this video, I'm going to assume you already have Ink Stitch installed. You can see if you have it installed by coming to Extensions and finding Ink Stitch in the list. Now, for the color palettes, there are loads of different embroidery threads, so to be more consistent with the colors we're using or to kind of see a more accurate representation of our design in Ink Stitch, we want to make sure we're using the correct palette. First things first, we are going to need to import the palettes into Inkscape. This is very easy because Ink Stitch comes with a built in program to do that. All you're going to do is come to Extensions, come down to Ink Stitch, come down to Thread Color Management, and you're going to choose Install Thread Color Palettes for Inkscape. You're going to click that, give it a minute, and it will pop up and say successfully installed color palettes. Please restart Inkscape. Once you have restarted, you can come over here to this little burger menu. And you will see a wide variety of color palettes to use. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up some keybinds and some other basic settings that are going to make our design process a lot smoother. First thing you're going to do is come over here to edit. You're going to come down to preferences. You are going to come over here to interface, click the little triangle to open up and you're going to come down to keyboard. Now I'm only going to be adding two keybinds for now, but as you go into your own designing, then you're probably going to pick out some others that you want. The process to add new keybinds is going to be exactly the same for every single one of these you change. The first one is for params. You see, I already have the shortcut added here. To add a new shortcut, you're going to come to the shortcut column. You're going to click here. It will say new accelerator. And we're just going to give a keybind. I'm going to do control alt P. Okay, the second keybind we're going to set up is for the satin stitch. Convert line to satin. I use this a lot. So I have this set to control alt s you can set it to whatever you like do not set it to control s because that is how you are going to save your document so long as it doesn't conflict with anything else change it to whatever you like and that is all the keybinds you're going to need to change however we still have more work to do in this little preferences window 
So you're going to close the interface, you're going to open tools, and you're going to come down here to the node tool. Now when you open it up, it's going to look something like this. And you want to make sure this box and this box are checked. This one, show path direction on outlines and show temporary outline for selected paths. Now what this does is if we have a line like so, we, we know because we just made it that the line goes from here to here. But if we're working with a lot of lines, we will lose track of that. And it is important when we are making designs to know which way our embroidery machine is going to stitch this line. Now to see the direction of the line, we're going to come over here to this tool right underneath the cursor, the node tool. And we are going to check this box right here. And that is going to add a little red line, as you can see. And it shows that the direction is going from this way to this way. Make sure this box is toggled and also make sure you have selected the line in question. Okay, we're going to go ahead and delete this, select it, backspace. And that is all of the major changes you need to make to get started in Inkscape. But there is one more thing I want to tell you, and that is how to navigate around the canvas. For example, how to move it around, how to zoom in and out, and how to use these layers. If you have a middle mouse button or a scroll wheel, hold it down and you can drag the canvas around. You can hold down control and use the scroll wheel to go forward and backwards. If your mouse does not have a scroll wheel, I highly recommend you get one because it will make your life a lot easier. However, you can still zoom in and out without one. Just plus and minus on your keyboard will zoom in and out. If you push the five key, it will center your canvas in your screen. If you have an object on your screen and it is selected, you can press three and it will zoom in on that selection. Push five again and it will come back to the canvas. Now about the layers, Layers are going to be incredibly useful as you're making your designs because they will keep each element of your design completely separate. Let's add a couple of layers here to demonstrate. I'm going to add a blue rectangle on layer one. I'm going to add a green rectangle on layer two and a red rectangle on layer three. You will notice that layer one is on the bottom of our list here, which means that this blue square is going to be underneath both of the other shapes. Layer two is going to be in the middle and layer three, our red rectangle is going to be on top. We can click and drag these around as needed to reorder these shapes. You can also select the layer in question and click these buttons to reorder them like so. Now, if you look closely, you can see that this is nested within the layer three, but it doesn't have to be. We can click and drag and we can pull it out of layer three. We could put it on top of layer three, or we could even put it in layer two. You notice there's a green rectangle around layer two and that will put our rectangle three in layer two. Okay, now let's say we have layer one and we have multiple things on that layer one. And then we come to layer two and we have multiple things on this layer two. And then layer three, it's even worse. There's multiple things. It looks a mess. This is a very extreme example. I don't think your workspace will ever look quite this bad, but if it does, you can come over here. But let's say you want to work on layer two. You can come over here to layer one and you can click this little eye to hide layer one. Go over to layer three, hide layer three. So you can only see the rectangles on layer two. Now, let's say you are incredibly happy with how layer two has come out. You want to make no more changes to layer two. You can come over here to this little padlock and you can close it and that will lock everything in layer two and then layer two will be inaccessible. You will no longer be able to make changes to layer two. Now, the one thing you probably saw me do just was change the color of these rectangles. Inkscape offers two ways you can change colors. You can change the fill and you can change the stroke. The fill is what the color is filled with and the stroke is the color of the border. To change the fill, all you want to do is come down here and left click a color in your palette. To change the stroke, you're going to do 
almost exactly the same thing. You're going to come down here, hold shift, and then you're going to left click a color in your palette. If you want to remove the fill, you're going to left click this cross right here. And if you want to remove the stroke, you are going to shift left click to move the shape around. You can just click, drag it around. To resize it, you can hold any of these little handles and just resize it. If you want to keep the proportions of the shape the same, you can hit control, grab a handle and move it. And you will only be able to move it in that proportion. Or you could grab a handle and then hit control and it will snap to the correct proportion it was in before. If you want to rotate a shape, click the shape till it comes up with handles and then click it again and it will switch to rotation mode. You can move the anchor point of where it rotates by moving this little cross around and that will rotate it at the corners or back to the center. These side handles will change the tilt. Again, you can move the anchor points and it will change where it tilts from. And that is the basics of what you need to know to begin designing in Inkscape. Make sure you like this video and leave a comment with any questions or difficulties you have and subscribe to the channel because there will be a lot more Inkstitch videos coming up soon. Bye for now.